I I have a few I have a few examples of some small text here, just for some reference. So this is twenty millimeters, and obviously you can read ten millimeters and eight millimeters. What I'm pointing out here though is the different fonts. You can see that text will show up differently and stitch out differently. If you look at the two E's here, if depending on what font you use. And another thing I want to point out here is contrast. So text will look better if you contrast it. So if you look here, this is some of the same size, like eight millimeter text, but it's not as legible because of the contrast. But you can see the Paris looks really good. Another example I have here for you, as we're talking about small text is, you can see here that this 365 is not legible, right? Um, and there's a way to correct that, but when you start getting small text, and I want you to see here, this actually says every day, right? But you can't read it, it is too small. And if you're an arm's length away, can you really read it anyways? Like when you have small text, so you have to ask yourself, is it gonna be legible even if somebody's not like right up on you? Because like, you know, I don't know about in, in Europe, but Americans, we have distance rules, right? So if somebody is an arm's length away, six feet away, as they should be, they're not going to be able to read some of this small text. So I did take this same cap, and I made the text a little bit bigger, and I contrasted it better. And you can see that this text is legible because it's large enough. But if it was far away, would we be able to have that same legibility? So text, small text... In some cases, you might say it's really important because I just want that text there. You have to ask that question first. The next thing is to know, is the contrast gonna be great enough for somebody to be able to pick it out even if it is smaller text? Let's jump inside the computer and I'm gonna show you some tricks of the trade to get your small text legible. So as you saw before the video started, let's talk about small text. There's not a whole lot of like um, secret squirrel stuff to this it's just in the settings again digitizing is not an art it's all in the settings right so i started this with a micro block and inside of your font software you should have or excuse me your digitizing software you should have recommendations on what size the font should be i try to go between four and five millimeters i will not go below four millimeters and if i do go below four millimeters like we talk about what i would do is i would break this apart and i would lower this and i would open up some of these holes here i would go with a smaller needle like we already talked about and i would also uh, go with a smaller thread but this is just using the simple 75 11 needle and a 40 weight thread and then i change some of my settings so let's go over here to your uh, connectors and a lot of people don't change this and normally here the connectors will be um right at seven so change your inside and after objects to about 1.5 all right and then in your underlay i get rid of underlay but if you did add or underlay add in a center run and that would be the maximum that i would add in another thing that you can do is change your density uh to uh let's see where this is change your density to between 44 and normally this sits at 38. So change it to between 44 and 55 millimeters. Um, now I'm gonna talk about this really quickly because I said that I would. Let's see if we can uh, break this apart and then we'll break it apart again. Okay, so now the A is broken apart. And what I wanted to show you was, now you see you have three different parts to the A here. And so what you can do is once you bring it here and there's the A, you can lower this part down. So lower this down so it'll be a little bit more legible and you can pull this out here. And that will make this hole not fill up and it will be more legible. Now you can do the same thing when you have these here. So you can break this apart. Let's break this apart again. And now you see that it's broken apart and then you can come here. And what you can do is select all of these nodes like this. Let's uh, control click these. Okay, and you can raise this up a little bit. And you can see the small hole opening here. So just raise those up a bit. You can hold your control button down a little bit and then that will open that hole up more, right? And then I talked about the ease. So I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you that really quickly. 
the E's are the same thing. Now you can see, you saw the problems that we have with the E's. So what you can do is just raise this up a little bit and give that, and it looks wonky here, but you saw how it looks stitched out, right? So you can raise that up a little bit so that will stitch out correctly. And with these S's, it's kind of the same thing. What I was talking about with the S's, and I'm gonna go into this in more detail. I was talking to my wife about this. Um, earlier and when we stitch we're going to change out the needles so we can um, show you exactly how this works with a smaller needle we're going to use smaller text i'm going to go more in depth on how to you can actually get these uh letters and what you can do you can get these letters and it will in your software will at least will come will will automatically save the letters once you have them so we can lift this up a little bit Okay, and then we're gonna delete those nodes. And that will open that space up like I told you about, right? So you can take all of your S's. Now, it is possible, and I'll show you another video, it is possible to every time you have the letters below four millimeters or below five millimeters, that the letters will automatically show up like this so you don't have to do this every time. So let's go over the settings one more time. So as you know, we, these are five millimeter, between four and five millimeters. We have no underlay, or you can use a center run. Um, you wanna make sure that if you had any overlaps to get rid of any overlaps that you might have, because that's obviously gonna get in the way of what you're doing. You can also, if you want to use a center run, but uh, I probably wouldn't use any. Um, also, as we talked about, you can use a 65 or a number nine needle. You can switch your thread out to a 60 weight thread. You can also move the density like I talked to you about, move any underlay, we already talked about that, and minimize your holes. And this is what I was talking about here. So again, take these A's, you can, for the O's if they're small, depending on what font you're using, like this P is another letter here, you can break that apart, and break it apart again. And now you're gonna know what we talked about. You can just select those, right? And then raise, I almost didn't break that apart enough. Let's break it apart one more time. There we go. And take those and raise that up to get this hole wider in here. You can actually come in here and you also select these nodes and raise that up again to get more space in there. So these are ways that you're gonna have to hand edit these letters, okay? And the B is another one, that's a booger bear here, right? So you're gonna wanna break that apart. And this letter is a little bit more difficult, so I'm not gonna do it live here for you right now, but you would raise this up, and then you would come inside of here, and you raise that up right there to get that hole to be bigger in there. But you also gotta come down here and do the same thing. And this takes, some messing around, right? So it's looking okay now, but you would wanna take a little bit of messing around. You see how I'm opening that up a little bit, right? So you wanna keep going in here. And then what you're gonna have to do is stitch it out. You're gonna have to go in there and stitch it out and make sure that everything looks okay. Here, the way it looks here is not gonna look the same way that uh, it's gonna look. Now, the next, uh, when you stitch it out. Now, the next thing I wanna do is go to your connectors. And here, you wanna take this out from being a seven, which is normally is to a 1.5, and that's gonna be inside and after the object. Cut these trims off. Usually, you wanna cut the trims off if you want to. Cut the all your trims and all of your underlay you wanna have, so you don't have any errant threads running through there. Any one thread could throw everything off right and that's pretty much it on small text very short video it doesn't need to be an hour and a half long to explain this to you just rewind the video and go over it again and the the biggest thing you can do the best thing you can do is break these apart and test you, you have the machine right in front of you right you have to go test so you drag excuse me let me go back here and you see we can drag this down right and make that A a little bit bigger. It's up to you to go in and test and keep stitching it out, but those are hints. And again, I want you to remember that if 
do you need to, to, to really see that text? If you don't have to read that, if you can't read it two, two distance, uh, two, uh, six feet away or two arms distance away, you might want to rethink whether you really need that small text. But if you decide to say, yes, I need the small text, go for it. Let's look at the stitch out. And this is a 45 millimeter density. And as you can see, we do have some loose threads here that needs a little bit of cleanup, but we have some legibility here. I wanna point out a couple of things. Look at these E's. This is one of the first things I ran into when I started to stitch out because my brand has an E in it and they come out wonky like this. Now I'm gonna show you how to fix these in another video, but a giveaway would be, you need to kind of stretch up this part here and make sure because your push pull on this particular letter is weird. If you notice, you almost have a little gap there as well. Other than that, also on the R's here, you can open these up. And in the video, I showed you how you can stretch these A's down. These A's are okay, but if you notice, if you went any thicker with your fill, that that would fill up that little hole. So if you wanna fill that hole up, you can take this part of the A and bring it down a little bit. And there's, but these O's look really good. And these look really good. Now with these S's, um, I'll show you in another video on how you can edit your small text. So this, you just take a little small piece of this off of here and the S would even be more legible. This is probably the smallest that I would like to go with any text. This is about a six millimeter, five millimeter text and it's very legible. Um, and any anything any smaller than this is gonna start getting wonky and you'll have to start doing run stitches to spell out whatever words you want. And then again, you'll have to ask questions to yourself can they read it if they're you know six feet away? You can take a couple of needles and use them for small text. So let's use black and white thread on these last two needles. Change these over to a size 65 or a, uh, a nine if you're in Europe. And also you might wanna use some smaller thread. Now, normally in your embroidery machine, you use a size 40. These are size 60. And this is what I keep on hand for small text. Just some simple, colors that I like to use within my own brand. And you notice that I didn't get a big 5,000 meter spool of this, just a few spools to throw up there so you can get smaller text, smaller text. Remember your needle size is about one millimeter and then your, your uh, thread size is a certain length. So you don't have enough space in that one hole and it's just gonna get jumbled up. So using a smaller needle and smaller thread will result in more legible small text.